And that same theme can be found all over the ancient world of this hybrid race. In 1850, an English guy called Layard found uh, tens of thousands of clay tablets in what we now call Iraq, which were buried, it is estimated, around 2000 BC. And they tell the story of that area of the world, which we now call Iraq, uh, which uh, of course spawned the Sumer society, uh, which even conventional history says was the cradle or a cradle of modern civilization. And these Sumerian tablets that increasingly have been translated and books written about the translations talk about how this race of gods, which the tablets call the Anunnaki, which apparently in Sumerian translates as those who from heaven to earth came, not only brought great knowledge to that area of the world, but interbred with humans, creating crossbreed hybrid race, the Nephilim, who cause mayhem. not far, just down the road really, was Egypt, which again was a society far ahead of its time. And what's interesting about those two cultures is the normal course of evolution is to start at one level and through trial and error and learning, you evolve to a higher level. Both of those societies started at the peak of their existence and gradually fell away. The opposite of what you would expect. This is the true origin to the idea of the divine right of kings, the divine right to rule by your bloodline. And this does not relate to any earth race, because this particular genetic structure works through all races, particularly the white race, which is why the white race um, has taken the world over. And this is why also, the ruling families of the world, be it the European aristocracy, the royal families, the Eastern establishment families of the United States that, that run that country. This is why they have always incessantly interbred with each other. It's about holding a genetic structure which those at the top of that pyramid know all about and they know who they are. And in the Sumerian tablets, they actually taught, remember 1850 they were found, 2000 BC apparently they were uh, buried, but they tell the story going back way before 2000 BC. They talk about how the first interbreeding between these gods and humanity was done by what we call today test tube methods, excuse me. We would think that was ludicrous according to official history, and in 1850 it would have sounded completely lunatic, except we're doing it now. And all around the world, like I say, you find um, this same recurring theme of uh, gods interbreeding with humanity. Where did that knowledge come from? Have a guess. So around the ancient world, again, this is the, the Hindu culture, you find in the Vedas and these other um, texts and legends, stories of these high-tech gods warring in the sky and bringing knowledge to humanity of various kinds. The elite of that ancient time had and the elite of modern times also have. One key area of knowledge that this elite have held all this time is the true nature of the sun. All through this period we're talking about, there have been two levels of knowledge in everything. If you read the religious texts, like the Bible and other religious texts, as an initiate of numerology, of the Illuminati codes, etc., you read the text in a certain way and you see what it's really symbolically saying. 
If you're not initiated into that knowledge, and most people aren't obviously, you read the same text and you are encouraged to take the symbolic literally. So, the same piece of text can be a means of passing on knowledge through initiates and creating prison religions and prison histories for the masses. And in the ancient world, the sun was the same, so is today. The mass of the people focused on the sun because of its obvious effect on their daily lives, their crops, their lives, heat, warmth, light. But at that level of initiation, which had been passing on this ancient knowledge, they knew the sun was far more than that. They knew that the sun was and is still an incredible generator of energy that is affecting life on Earth second by second. And that these cycles of emissions of energy from the sun can be predicted very precisely, the sun cycle. And at their peak, some of the energy that's projected from the sun and comes to the earth on the solar wind has taken out computer systems, has taken out power systems.